in college basketball, co- college basketball coaches say, "Hey, we got too many, we got too many three car garage guys. Sometimes too many two car garage guys." Right? It's a way of coding the same word. Michael Bennett's like, "Look, you need a couple thugs on the team." Accurate. One hundred percent. He just kept it real, and, and, and I like Michael Bennett. I was with Michael Bennett when he was a rookie, and we cut him when I was in Seattle. His, my first year in Seattle, he was a rookie, and we released him. 100% he's right. What he's saying is you need a bunch of dogs. You can't have a team full of choir boys. And every coach would agree with him. They might not come out and say it, but, but they'll agree with that. Yeah, you, but you can't have a team full of them, right? You, need, you, need a, you, need, you do need a balance there of guys that are, are dependable, guys that listen, guys that are respectful. You need a couple. You need one or two crazy dudes, you know, in order to it, – it kind of – it, it, I don't know, it just there has to be a balance. There. Oh, 100%. If you have a team full of, as he said, thugs, it's not going to turn out very well at all because everybody's going to be on their own agenda. Guys are going to do what they want to do. And I don't want any Latrell Sprewells. I don't want guys choking the coaches. I want guys, when they get in between the lines, now we can play. We're going to be dogs. We're not going to let anybody run us over. Uh, okay, let me, let me ask you about this story. There's a story out that – or John Lynch actually let the story out – that when the Jimmy G trade went down, um, the the coaching staff of the San Francisco 49ers, they were actually sad. That Kyle Shanahan was was sad because he wanted Kirk Cousins, and he ended up getting Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, look, Jimmy G proved to be better than I think anybody could have thought or hoped or wished for, and they signed him to a long-term contract. Does that do anything to damage that relationship that – that he let it out of the bag that he actually wanted Cousins as opposed to Garoppolo? I think it was just being honest. He was being organic. It was unfiltered. What, what, when they traded for Garoppolo, I wondered, when are they going to start him? And, and I thought they were trying to suppress his value and play him maybe the last two games of the season so that we don't have to sign him to such a huge deal, which they end up having to do. They didn't want to play him early on because if he plays well, he's going to get the type of contract that he received. Now, I can't fault Shanahan for wearing Kirk Cousins because he believed in him. He felt like he's going to strive and play well in my system. Um, who got the better deal? You don't know. That time will tell. All right, the Giants ha- have the number two pick. They're sticking with Eli for now. They got OBJ. They started the process of rebuilding their offensive and defensive line. Defense isn't terrible. They just had a lot of personality conflicts. They got Sterling Shepard to come back as well next year. You're number two in the draft. You got Saquon Barkley. You could take Chubb on the defensive side. You could help the off. You got a good guard from Notre Dame. Or you could draft the quarterback of the future, but he would sit behind Eli. What do you do? Me personally, I'm drafting Josh Rosen. Uh, Josh Rosen would not mind sitting a year or two. He's told me that personally, and so I do know that. He would love to go sit and learn behind Eli. Josh Rosen is the best pure passer, I believe, in in this draft. You look at what he did at UCLA, he didn't have great talent around him, and he pretty much carried that team. And and so you you look at and say, draft Saquon Barkley. Do they have the offensive line that is going to allow Saquon Barkley to flourish and shine? I don't think they do. I don't believe they have that type of – those type of guys up front. If Eli is on the tail end of his career, if Josh Rosen has a sit two, maybe even three years, then when he comes into play, he's ready to go, a la Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers type of deal. What about what about Darnold? Uh, you you said he's that Rosen's the best pure passer. Where do you where do you fall in with the Sam with the Sam Darnold? <laughs> you know, I like uh, Jordan Palmer is my guy, and I know Jordan is, is training him. But I'm not. I'm not really sold on Sam Darnold like everybody else is. I, 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 he has an opportunity like everybody to be a pretty good player. But when you look at his performances at SC, he was surrounded by four and five star recruits at every position. Every position at SC, they're getting four and five star recruits, and, and he played well. But you you look at the Ohio State game, they dumped him. He didn't play well at all. They, use, they lose to Utah. Just certain games that SC would lose and he wouldn't play well, and it's not like he doesn't have NFL-caliber talent surrounding him at every position. Well, he, But he did it. He had all new wide receivers, and like he was having to run around back there and make plays on his own. Like I, I would actually I would say U, UCLA had inferior talent but superior coaching, whereas USC seemed to have inferior coaching and superior talent. That doesn't bode well if – 
UCLA has superior coaching. Those coaches are fired. <laughs> USC has inferior coaching. They still have a job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just there was there was a lot going on in that USC in that USC backfield. Um, you you mentioned when you guys had it going in Cincinnati, Carson was your Carson was your quarterback. They feel like they're like in they're in that purgatory place, right? Like Andy's good enough, but everybody it's like that Alex Smith thing. He's good enough to get you to the playoffs, but then you're like, can can they ever take that next step? I, I hope so. I, I you know I, I root for the Bengals. I really do. I growing up, I was a Cowboy fan. Like the Cowboys were my team. Like I'd fight somebody if the Cowboys lost and they talked about them. But I, I root for the Bengals to do well. I like to see them win. Can, I would like to say yes, and, and the reason I say that is because Marvin finally had an opportunity to hire the coaches he wanted to hire. Like half of those coaches, I was there before Marvin. Half of those coaches were there with me before Marvin got there, so he was forced to keep those guys. Because they were cheap? I don't know if they were cheap or not. I just know he had an opportunity now to bring in his coaches. Everybody thought, oh, Marvin's retiring. If Marvin didn't have this opportunity to bring in his coaches, then he was done. But because he was afforded an opportunity to bring in the coaches that he wanted, he stayed. And, and so I look for them to take that step because – Marvin has more say so in his coaching staff. Before it was okay, Marvin, he's going to coach this position. Okay. TJ Husmanzada, Oregon State, 11 year NFL vet, Pro Bowl in 2017. Speak for yourself today. Speak for myself today with oh. you. <laughs> All right. That'll be, that, that'll be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.